blogging and flogging techniques. Over to you. Thank you very much, David. I wasn't actually expecting this many people. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we think you're dead. That's so why. <laughs> no heckling for the cheap seats. Anyway, hello. Yes, I am Graham from Affordable Leather Products. I'm sure many of you have seen my stall, where I sell lots of lovely hitty things and also restraining things and ouchy things and fun things. But today we are talking about hitty things. So this is an introduction to flogging, <coughs> flogging techniques. A little bit more about impact play. Basically, I'm going to freewheel this a little bit, but um, let's just see where this goes. Um, first of all, we have the obligatory talk about negotiation and consent. If you're going to be hitting someone with something, you want to make sure that they want to be hit by it. Because hitting people without their consent is not a good idea. Okay, so. If you've never played with someone before, ask them what they like, what they don't like. Personally, I like thuddy sensations, I don't like stingy sensations. Consequently, if you come near me with a cane without a really good warm-up, I'm going to be safe working out of there very quickly. <laughs> if, on the other hand, you're using a nice thuddy flogger, you can use that on me all day, and I'm like, oh yeah, thank you. So, um... Make sure also you know what their limits are. Some people like bruises. Some people might, you know, they might go to a gym, go to swimming or something like that. You can't, well, you, you might want to go to the swimming pool with a nice line of stripes down your backside. It might be a bit of a giveaway if your people who know you don't know you're into that sort of thing. Um, again, putting bruises on people if they're in a relationship with someone else, they might not want that person to be bruised, or they might be a little bit upset when they find out that their partner is into something they didn't know they were into. Um, also, safe words, safety. If you're playing with someone who's yelling, help, no mercy, stop, you've got to know whether that actually means I want you to stop, or whether that means please keep doing more and more of this because I'm absolutely enjoying it. I tend to recommend the traffic light system, green, amber, and red. Green for a check-in. So if you're playing with someone who gets really deep into subspace, I'm not mentioning any names here. <clears throat> My uh, volunteer here. Um, she can get really into it. And sometimes, you know, I just want to be sure, are you OK? What's your check-in safe word? Green, fine, not a problem. Amber means getting close to a limit. So you might want to think about backing off a little bit. Red means stop because this is getting too intense for me. And red, red, red is emergency stop. Something's gone wrong. They're getting scared. They're getting cramped. Trust me, getting cramped in the middle of a scene is not fun. Uh, but whatever it is, you stop. That's it. End of scene. You don't swap to something else. You untie them. You get them free, whatever. Cuddle them. Settle them down. When they've chilled out a little bit, then you talk about what went wrong, why it went wrong, what could have been done differently, what we can do next time. Basically, it's just a little bit of care to make sure that, you know, if, if you take care of someone, you can play with them again. You get it wrong, you're never going to see them again. So think about safety as well. Um, for instance, face slapping. Some people love face slapping. Some people, if they've been in an abusive relationship, face slapping could be a complete trigger for them. Bam, that's it. You just destroy the entire scene just because you thought you'd slap them across the face without checking to see if it's okay first. So, you know, the whole point of safe saying and consensual is make sure that everybody is having fun. So, I have a range of floggy toys, which I will demonstrate everything from, um, shall we say, Quite nice to quite nasty to seriously nasty. Uh, but terms I use to describe the toys you use basically thud, someone else's teeth in today, thud, sting, and thwack. Thud, if you take the heel of your hand and just pound it against your forearm, that's a thuddy sensation. You can feel it deep down in the tissue but there's nothing much on the surface. Sting, on the other hand, if I slap like that, it's a very surface sensation. 
you get sting on the surface, not too much going down into the tissue below. Thwack, if you drive it down hard, then you not only get the surface sensation, but you also get the deep down sensation as well. So different toys have different effects. For instance, a cane tends to be a very stingy sensation. A suede flogger tends to be a very thuddy sensation and something that's heavy, but also has sting to it, a thwacky sensation. These are personally terms like, you know, this is, this is not sort of official diktat. This is, you know, there are definitions in the dictionary or anything like that. There's no one true definition of all of this sort of thing. Don't let anyone tell you there is. Um, but it gives an idea of what sort of effect something's going to do. So if I say that's a stingy toy, you know it's not going to be a thuddy toy, fairly obviously. Um, the suede floggers, these are thuddy. Basically, suede has a soft impact. You can hear there's not much of a whack to that thing. These ones being the straight tail have a little bit of flick on the end of the tail, but still mostly thuddy. The loop tail ones, which uh, many of you have probably seen on my stall, these are pure thud because the ends loop back to the uh, back to the handle, twice as heavy, and that is just pure thud. This thing, you know, I love this one personally. <coughs> So someone once used one of these of me at an after party. I was up on a cross and she stopped because I was just giggling helplessly. <laughs> uh, and eventually she just took me down off the cross, and took me over to her sofa to sit down. And I swear to you, I didn't touch the ground. I just floated over there on this little cloud of endorphins. And it took me about 20 minutes to come back down from that. Um, something like the uh, this one which is totally evil. This has a stingy sensation, but it also has the weight, so it's going to give you the thwack as well. That is going to you know, really leave you with an intense sensation. You're going to remember this one for quite a while if it's used. <laughs> you wouldn't get anywhere near me personally, but <laughs> that's my personal preferences. Some people, the more of this, the better. Again, mentioning no names. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one other little one we have here, this is horsehair. Horsehair has a, a unique little sensation because it's like a little scratchy sting rather than a hard, bitey sting. But what it does is it just leaves a lovely little tingle, which is wonderful for warming someone up, for getting the blood flowing, getting the endorphins going, and just basically building up on a sensation that then you can carry on with as you go on. So obviously you start off with something gentle, warm someone up, and it's like, you know, if you, if you were going to run a race, you wouldn't just walk down to the track, get your track suit off and boom, start running. You'd want to warm up, you'd want to stretch off first. Same thing with these toys. You don't just go, okay, fine, bend over, cane, whack. Most people are not going to be into that sort of thing. Some people are, hey, you know, <laughs> but most people don't have that sort of pain threshold. They want to be warmed up first. They want to get the endorphins going. Then they can take the heavier stuff later on. So what I wanted to talk a little bit now is about how to actually use a flogger. So um, I should have grabbed another chair, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to have to work around this now. Um, so can we <laughs> quick swap of chairs? Can you just this weekend? Can you grab the chair you're on? A good way to practice is to get a cushion and put it on the back of a chair because the important thing about when you're using a flogger or any other toy like this is looking at where the tips of the instrument are actually landing. Okay, Most people or a lot of people have a bad idea of thinking that actually it's the body of the flogger that does the impact but it's on the tails. I'm going to be doing a little bit of swinging here. I will make sure I don't try and hit the chandelier or yourselves. Okay. But what I want to do is concentrate on getting the ends to hit the center of the cushion there. Okay. If I go too far, it wraps around. See what happens? I've just pulled that off there. Now, if you're doing that on someone, you've hit the bum, but your tails are wrapped around, and they've hit someone on the hip. Hitting someone on the hip, You've got bone right underneath the skin. There is no padding there. 
really not nice at all. Okay, so you've got to think to start off with. I always recommend people start off with a straight arm stroke and you swing from the shoulder because then your arm is not going to get pulled out. Okay, what happens sometimes people start with a bent arm, they swing, but then the acceleration straightens their arm out and they end up wrapping around. So if you practice with a cushion or a pillow or whatever on a chair, make sure you're hitting not too low. If you hit too low, again, you're hitting in possibly in very, very sensitive parts of the anatomy. Too high, and you can be hitting on the smaller back. Again, no protection, no padding, not a good place to hit. All right? If you've limited space, like I do here, backhand techniques, where instead of hitting forwards, you're hitting that way. So I find it's a good idea sometimes to hold the tails grip in my hand like that, then you can that was a little high, you see how it bounced off? So if you practice like this, you know what you're going to be doing when you've actually got someone on the actual receiving end of this one. There are other techniques you can use. So for instance, figure eighting, where you're swinging it in a loop each side. Hopefully I can get this one right without making a mess of it now. The trick there is to move from the elbow and the wrist. The elbow stays smooth, the wrist actually does the movement. If you've ever seen um, what are called poi, there are um, a couple of weighted balls on strings that people sort of swing around, do these sorts of movements with. If you look at POI, P-O-I, uh, there's some great techniques there where you can do double-handed vlogging, also known as Florentine, which is, uh, you can do bang, 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 like that. It gives a very intense sensation, but obviously you need to use a soft enough toy that you're not going to, uh, you know, do too many heavy impacts too quickly. Uh, so, um, once you've got the hang of using a straight arm stroke, turn that around a little bit there, what you can start doing then is actually using the hip to increase the intensity. It takes a little bit more practice that, but what you need to do, you bring the hip back, and wind in, you can uh, give it a little bit more of an intense stroke, shall we say. Um, what did I get to? <laughs> Check my notes here. Um, but what you need to do is basically get a feel for the toy. How does it work? How does it operate? Something like this one, this is half a kilo, so it's a very heavy toy in comparison to, for instance, the horsehair one which is very lightweight obviously this one is you know you can just use it with your fingertips whereas this one is going to take a little bit more effort so feel how the toy works feel how it operates see what sort of impact you can get with it and make sure obviously you know you've got control over it um right i have a few little handouts here. And how many did you print out? Twelve. Twelve. Okay, there's actually twelve of these. What you are. <laughs> but if you, if, if you, uh, I, wasn't, I say I wasn't expecting quite so many people. But this is also on my website. So if you, if you want to get one of these at the end, come to my website, pick up one of my flyers, and just look on my site for the resources link, and you'll be able to download this. But basically, what this is, this is a graphic that I picked up years ago. And it's a guide to basically where to hit, good places to hit green, places where you can hit but lightly, which are amber, and red, which means don't hit places like that at all, because they're really not safe places to hit. So I have a little volunteer here. <laughs> I have a volunteer here. <laughs> I want to, uh, to this. Okay, so. Starting from the top of the body, okay, 
say, you can slap someone on the face, again, check for triggering for, you know, they might want, not want to have marks on their faces when they go home, for instance, but it is possible. If you're going to do this, obviously, though, watch out that you don't hit too far back and hit them on the ears. You know, you can perforate someone's eardrum. Um, you know, if they've got uh, expensive bridge work on their teeth, probably not a good place to hit because that yeah, you know, trip to the dentist, um, they might object to that. Okay, um, on the shoulders, you've got the collarbones, you've got basically very little protection there, not a good place to hit again. Um, coming down the arms, borrow one arm here, thank you very much indeed. You can hit on the biceps and on the forearm, um, they're not sort of classic targets, but they are certainly available. But again, watch out for the shoulders, watch out for the elbows. Again, lack of padding. The hands, you've got uh, a lot of small bones in there. You've got the wrists as well. Again, very you know, sort of sensitive parts, um, fragile parts, shall we say. So again, the, you've got the classic sort of cause on the palm of the hand school type punishment. You can do this. Personally, don't do that with me. I've got, uh, I don't know what I ever did to this little finger, but I damaged it and anything pressure on that is really, really painful. Um, the classic school wrap on the knuckle, knuckles with a ruler, again, not a good thing. You've got little bones there, they can't take much, you know, pressure, shall we say. You might damage something. Coming down the front of the body, obviously, are the chest or the breasts can take pressure, can take impact, but again, you're bruising possibly delicate tissue there. Some people like this, some people don't. Some people are a little bit, shall we say, um, <laughs> some of them they're going, uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I won't say a word. Um, some people you know, might like that sort of thing. Uh, again, though, if you're going to be putting bruises on there, you've got to be okay, to you know, show the person you're actually doing targeting on is actually okay with that. Um, abdomen, you've got the floating ribs, you've got the internal organs, Stay well away from this. You know, you do not want to be hitting someone in the guts unless they're really well muscled and they can take it, but I wouldn't recommend it at all. There was a video clip that went around a while back of someone on the underground and she was belting someone with a flogger on the abdomen and not only was this breach of consent for everyone else watching it, but it was also really dangerous because she was putting serious bruises on someone's, you know, if you've got kidneys under there, you've got the liver under there, and people are worried about, you know, that person could be peeing blood because they've got internal injuries. So, yeah, don't do that sort of thing. The groin area, if you're going to do lightweight stuff, for instance, the horsehair flogger, lightweight suede floggers, you can do, again, hitting someone on the genitals is very tender and, you know, I've seen, I've seen video clips of guys being kicked in the groin seriously hard and it's like that's okay with you fine but uh, there is a thing called a testicular torsion where the testicle gets twisted around and you then have to have surgery so <laughs> again at your own risk personally I would sincerely not recommend it front of the thighs you've got a lot of padding there you can put impacts on that shouldn't be a problem but again too high you're going for the genitals too low you might hit on the kneecap Again, no padding on there, not a good place. Front of the shins, good way to, de you know, to uh, deter someone from chasing you is kick them in the shins and then run away very fast. Not a good idea to do this in the middle of a play session, however. Uh, the feet, again, you've got a lot of little bones in there. You've got stuff that's very easy to break, same with the ankles. Again, not recommended. Can you turn yourself around, please? Back of the head, back of the neck, again, you've got the spine, you've got back of the skull, you know, places like this are not good places to hit. Back of the shoulders, you've got the deltoids, you've got the lats up there, big muscles, they can take an impact, but watch out for not hitting with any rigid objects down the shaft of the spine, because again, you know, hitting someone on the spine could be a uh, cause problem, shall we say. Um, lower down, again, we've got the back of the, uh, the lower back there, so you've got the internal organs, you've got the base of the spine, you've got no padding there, it's a 
no go area, big big red area, don't go anywhere near that. Further down, obviously, we have the bum, the back of the thighs, classic targets for hitting someone on. Generally speaking, you can do, I won't say anything you like, pretty much anything you like on those because they can take a lot of impact. Um, one, one thing I will mention though, in a lot of, um, if anyone remembers magazines like the old Janus magazine, Caning magazines and stuff like that, they often describe about hitting the, the crease at the bottom of the buttock. The only issue with that is that just underneath there is the sciatic nerve. Now if you know anyone who suffers from sciatica, it feels like an electric shock goes down the back of your leg and it's really not fun. So make sure someone doesn't have problems like that before you do it, because if you whack them the cane and they start leaping around going, hey, 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 don't do that again. Uh, so hitting the bum, as I mentioned, don't go too high because you're going on the smaller back. Obviously if someone's bending over, especially if there's low, they tend to be sensitive parts of the anatomy hanging around there, <laughs> so it's a good idea for them to pull themselves forward and keep their legs closed together, unless you really want to hit them on those bits, they really want to be hit on those bits. Not me. Um, back of the knee, avoid. Back of the calves, it's possible, again, you know, as long as you stay away from the knees and the ankles, they can take reasonable impacts again because you've got you know, a bit of padding there, you've got something to take an impact. Ankles, feet, not a good idea. Soles of feet, bastinado, falaka, it can be done, but if you start using things like canes on there, people have been crippled because, you know, it, does, it can do a lot of damage to the soles of someone's feet. If you're hitting with a heavy bruising impact, you know, even breaking bones at the bottom of the feet. So these are you know, again, things you've got to think very carefully about if you're actually going to do it. Um, there is a note at the bottom of this. This document is the body cover. Purposes of advice, all activities are engaged in entirety at the risk of the participants and should only be taken, undertaken with care and consent. So if you do anything like this, don't blame me, all right? Get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me just start. Uh, Switch back to that one a second. Um, right. I mentioned earlier, let me just grab a couple of these toys here. Grab all of these toys. About warm ups. Now, this is an elk hide flogger, really soft, really sensuous, very lightweight. So basically, I could use this one as a nice little warm up toy because it's just a little bit of flick to it. It's going to start warming someone up but it doesn't have a lot of weight, doesn't have a lot of impact, so it's not going to, you know, get an unfortunate result, res, response too quickly. Again, with a backhand technique, I can just come in this way if I haven't got particularly much room to play with. So that's a nice little warm-up toy. As I mentioned before, there's the, uh, the horsehair flogger also. This is light enough to pretty, use pretty much on almost any part of the body apart from the face wouldn't need near the, near, near the eyes, but pretty much anywhere else it can take because it's just so light, it's not going to cause any bruising damage. But then we might move on, for instance, to the straight tail flogger, which is a little bit heavier, got a little bit of more impact. But one thing to notice is that I don't keep hitting in the same place. Spread the impact around, because if you just keep hitting in the same spot all the time, that's going to get uncomfortable. It's not too much fun. But if you just spread it around, warm up the whole area, you can get a nice flow of endorphins. And I can start putting a little bit more weight into it as I turn the hip into it. And uh, go over. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> She's like, yeah, come on. What's the <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> I can keep thinking lately. <laughs> so then we go on, for instance, to the loop tail flogger. Now this one being a lot heavier, as I mentioned, if you start using one of these with a the bent arm, I can do that because I've had a lot of practice with it. I know how it handles. But if I do it with a bent arm, and then the weight pulls it forward, that would be wrapping around that would start hitting on the hip. Not a good place to hit. 
but you can really put in a little bit more effort on that one. Or with the back side, again, backhand stroke. You can move this one around a bit. Get a nice solid thumpy impact on that one. <laughs> Someone's having fun here. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I have witnesses. Do it yourself now. <laughs> right. If you haven't played with someone before, how much can they take? You know, what I was doing there, for some people that might be, well, come on, start doing something. For other people, oh, that's getting too much. There's a lovely little thing I call one to ten, where this is one, and they say one, and I keep doing this until they say two. Say two. Two. <laughs> I put a little more effort. Then she might say three. Three. <laughs> then she might say four. Four. Right, <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know, straight away. That you know. If you're going to say a 10, then obviously that's a full strength, strength, full strength stroke. I really did get these teeth on this morning. <laughs> but that means you can play with someone, but they have control over how hard they're actually being hit. So she might go six, seven, eight. No, oh no, let's go back down to seven, shall we? And you just back off a little bit, a little bit gentle. Or they'll say, then let's go back to an eight. I've had some people go, you know, okay, let's just do a couple at 10 and then we'll call it quits. Fine. Of course, I was going to say zero, that means, okay, it's time to stop. So, basically, the person on the receiving end can control what's happening to them. But that means you know for next time, think, oh, I've played this with person before, and they were taking six, seven, eight. So, you know, okay, right, I know I can go that sort of intensity on them. Um, without them, you know, saying, oh, hang on a minute, no, nope, yeah, I might have to say the word out of this one. So, uh... See, so she can just take all this a lot more. <laughs> if we have something like the, uh, lovely rose cat here, this is a bit more of a thwacky impact, because you've got the weight of it, but you've also got the um, the leather on the roses, which gives it a sting as well. So this gives a thwack, it gives a deep down sensation, but also sting on the surface as well. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. This young lady here uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> tends to like, shall we say, the more um, intense play. Mm. Soft end, single tail, something like this. Now this one oh. makes a lot of noise. It's actually a bit more of a flick than a heavy impact. It does that. But another way she can control how hard I'm hitting her is that what you're going to do, you're going to thank me, you're going to count it, and you ask for the next one. Okay? One, sir. Thank you. Please, may I have another? Now, the thing is, if I've been hitting her really hard, oh. two, sir. Thank you. Please, may I have another? I will wait until she says, thank you, may I have another? Because if I give her just those few extra section, seconds to absorb the impact, recover from it, then she can take another shot. Mm. It's, like <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Four, sir, thank you. <laughs> Please, may I have another? Also, what you might say at one point or another is, thank you, sir, may I have two more? This is a phrase we have basically worked out between ourselves ah. that she means I want to take two more really hard strokes and then we call it a day but I know that I can hit her with two really hard strokes and then 
Attempted to swap the implements actually. Shall I? Yeah. <laughs> this is the really intense one. <clears throat> this one not only hits with the uh, the tap on the end, but also the uh, sharp and the knot. There's nothing but the same. Thank you, sir. Please, may I have another? Mm. Thank you. Very good girl. <laughs> you may sit down now if you would. Thank can. You. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, the last thing you might have noticed there, aftercare. You don't just flog someone, whip someone, cane them, whatever. Well, that's it. I'm out of here. Okay? They have just been kind enough to take that sort of treatment, shall we say, from you. So you want to give a little bit something back. You want to make sure they're okay. You okay? Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but once you've finished, Untie them, get them off the cross, get them off where they're bent over their chair or whatever. Sit them down, lie them down on the bed, cuddle them, hold them. <laughs> he loves being called a good girl. <laughs> whatever, you know, you have to work it out, obviously, between yourself and your partner. But, you know, you want to make sure, again, that they're okay. You know, they might be really deep into subspace and literally almost unable to function because they're just like totally spaced out on endorphins like I was, as I mentioned, that time on the cross. Yeah, you know, 20 minutes it took me to come back down and get some sem semblance of reality again because I was just so blissed out on endorphins. So it's a bit of care for the person you're playing with. It's a bit of thought. It's a bit of consideration. Because, say, hey, if, if you have a good time, if they have a good time, they'll come back and do it again. If you just dump them and walk off, then they're going to find someone who's gonna, they want to play with who's actually going to take care of them. So um, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Just mention all these demo items are available on my stall. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? Where exactly is your store located? <laughs> Just down the corridor, between the, um, basically by the uh, cloak room. Um, I'm wondering if you have any advice, if for example, you're with a partner who wants you to get to a number that physically you might not be strong enough to get to, do you usually change instruments or do you, what's your kind of plan for that? If, if, you, if you can't, simply because it's a physical strength issue, <laughs> Um, and even if you're using your heaviest toy, then um, unfortunately there's no real way that, you know, they, the, the other thing I would also point out by that, they may be able to take an intensity harder than you're capable of wanting to give, okay? Dom's can safe word too. This is, this is an important thing. They, you know, if they're, especially if they're deeply into subspace and they want more and more and you're like, hang on a minute, I'm not happy with this. I'm going to call a halt to this scene now. I'm going to stop this because I'm just not comfortable with where we're going at the moment. And, you know, you stop, you talk to them, you know, you settle the scene down and basically, okay, we've got to, you know, we, we need to figure something out here and you'll have to discuss it between yourselves. But simply, if, if, you, if you can't put in an intensity as hard as they like, um, I, I really can't think of a suggestion for that one, if you, you know, unless you buy heavier implements, such as, for instance, uh, this one, which is the probably the heaviest thing I sell at the moment. Um, but it, it could be a physical limitation that, you know, I've, I've seen very petite little doms who, you know, would not be able to wield that as hard as someone who's really built, you know, with muscular sort of person. Um, I can't really say much more on that one, I'm afraid. Um, yeah? yeah um, when we play, um, there's a fight sometimes that when we play, she can't actually talk. Right. She gets to that point fairly quickly. Okay. We've tried things like 
put things on pad and fold them up. That doesn't work. Yeah. Is there a system that you think well, Yeah, I mean, there, there is, for instance, if, especially if you're playing, for instance, with gags and things like that, give someone a bunch of keys, a bell, a ball, something like that. And if it gets too much, they just let it go, drops to the ground, makes a noise. It's obviously, hang on a minute, something's going wrong here. Even if you can't talk, you can just let your hand go. Um, there, there is a signal, a sign, something to tell you that we need to talk about this situation. At that point, you'd have to stop the scene, settle things down, you know, get it to a position where she is actually able to express what the issue is, and then you can work from that. But even if it's harder, lighter, change from a back to my bum, that's when I tend to struggle. And then I have to come around to be able to go, bum, for him to tell it. So. Mm. Yeah, that one, that's tricky yeah, again, exactly. simply because um, you need to be able to communicate in some way, but if you're so far into subspace that you can't communicate, unless you've pre-arranged you know, something that's going to happen, yeah. yeah, that one's that one's difficult. I'm afraid I, I, uh, I, I can't think on that one. So is there a question there? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Can I just say, kind of, maybe with that one, mm -hmm. they were saying, um, maybe it's a question also the the person who's chopping or dobbing, mm -hmm. just to, to learn that if they get that deep into it, to actually, after a certain amount of time, to change to something else. Mm -hmm. Good point, yes. You know, because yeah. if you know that you have a problem, I get to the point where I can't talk. I get incoherent. I, I'm, I'm put off and gagged as well. <laughs> um, but there is, maybe that's the way that, you know, the other person just needs to learn that maybe after a certain amount of time, you're not talking to me, so I'll change to something else yeah. and just see how that goes. Maybe that's another way of getting it. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt okay. you. No, no, that's fine, please. Yes. Uh, another suggestion that you might have already, it might do well something like yeah. 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 Maybe you want to do your art mask, view what you're on your bum, and then have a hand signal for yes and a hand signal for no. Or head or what have you. Mm. Yeah, good yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. If, if you didn't hear that, change. Um, yeah, basically, just occasionally switch it up, hit somewhere else, and see what reaction you get. So, for instance, if you hit on the bum and then you're hitting on the back, and they go, Yeah, actually, I'll have some more of that. Thank you very much. So, I was going to suggest you try the tapping system. <laughs> no, keep going. <laughs> you could have like just ask for one tap, but if he asks you, they ask you what you want. If you find your long rubble, you could have a tapping system. You discuss for four hands. So, you know, one tap for the ass, two taps for the shoulder, and it's easier when, because I, I get long rubble as well, and that might be easier for you because it's more kind of physical, you know, provided you're not bound at the time. Yeah, no, that no, might no. help you maybe. Yeah, it's more instinct, I think. Yeah, it's the unfun with the thing. Yeah, sort of get out of me. I mean, again, the, the green check in safe word. Yeah. Is, is good, yeah, are you okay? If they say green, fine, go ahead. If they non-verbal, then okay, let's hang on. Let's just make sure everything's still okay here. Is there uh, anything else? If not, thank you very much. As I say, I've got about 10 or a dozen of these handouts here. If not, you can have my website.